Welcome to Uptown Rumble, Heavy Music in the Bronx. My name is Stephen Payne, Director of the Bronx County Historical Society. Today is July 18th, 2024, and uh, Ryan, you want to go ahead and introduce yourself? My name is Ryan Rosado. I am the number one screaming boy from a band called Johnny Cage is a Fake. From 2003 to 2007, based out of the Bronx, New York, and Harlem. Mostly the Bronx. Awesome. Honored to have you here, and Johnny Cage is a Fake is such a, a cool and unique band, and uh, glad that it's it's going to be even further a part of this project. We already, of course, have done one with Gigi. Didn't get as much into Johnny Cage as a Fake with her. And mm -hmm. Let's see, who else that we've done one with? It's been, Will, it was, Will, Will yeah. was in it for a while, Le Leon? Um, Leon wasn't no, in it, but in uh, it. Alex Berman was in Alex. it after Gigi. That's right, went, that's right. That's yeah. right. So, so yeah, a lot of different members and a lot of different bands. So now we have, hey, the singer. So mm -hmm. honored to have you here. So thanks, man. Ryan, why don't you start off by talking a little bit about your family history and background, whatever you know about it, and mm -hmm. how your family ended up in the Bronx. Well, I'm second generation in the Bronx. My father was born here. He, uh, not to, there's a black cloud of surrounding my father's past, sure. but he was born here. Okay. Sure. My mother is from Puerto Rico. She came here when she was 12 years old. Okay. They met at a very young age, got married, had my sister, had me in 1970. I was born in 1977. And um, I've seen the Bronx. I've seen all the stages. I remember the flames. I remember the stray dogs running around. I remember the broken buildings. Uh, all that stuff is burned in my memory since I was a kid, you know. So I've seen all the phases up until right now. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what neighborhood did you grow up in? I grew up, when I was a little baby, we were by Marion Avenue. Okay, Marion Avenue, sure. And then my father's a superintendent, so we went from Marion Avenue, we went to Concourse Village. Okay, yeah. And, and he was a super in, in um, one side of, of Concourse Village. I mean, he either did all three buildings or one. Definitely one, he was a super. Okay, We had sure. HBO before everybody. Wow. <laughs> um, from there, my parents split up. My father went and he was a super in Janelle Towers over by um, um, by Pelham Parkway. Yeah, by you know? Pelham Parkway, that's right. And me, my mother, and my sister moved to Morrison and Soundview in Stratford Avenue. Uh -huh. And that's where I met Will I as see, a young teen boy. And um, yeah, so I also, you know, I, I've lived all over the Bronx, all, the Bronx, all over yeah. West Side, East Side, up North, all over the Bronx, yeah. South Bronx, everywhere. At least for a little while, in every single zone, you know. Wow. Right now, I don't live in the in the Bronx really. I I mean, I have one foot in the Bronx. My, my mother lives in the Bronx. She's elderly, you know. I check in on her like I'm sure. going to do today. Then I go back up to Westchester and I, I'm up there with my with my partner. Okay, I see. I see. Yeah. Um, which neighborhood are your earliest memories from? Is it from Concourse Village. Concourse Village might be yeah. their earliest memories. Yeah. What, what, what are some of those early stories? Um, the, the, being able to be, I remember the apartment and it, you could see a whole courtyard. Wow. And I remember like um, rappers, early yeah. hip hop days. I think Roxanne Sean Tape performed like right there. Wow. If I'm not mistaken. And, and like early rap day stuff. And I could just see it like right from my window, you know? Wow. And uh, just running around. Falling down, you know, BMX bikes, uh, big wheels and stuff. Not really, no, no, no really bad memories, but sure. I always had, like, I would watch TV and see, like, Little House on the Prairie and go, wow, where, the, where is this? And I look <laughs> outside and there's, like, packs of wild dogs and it's, like, you know, it's really scary looking for a kid, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. But uh, the one thing I can say is that what I remember was comparing where I live to what I was seeing on TV. Absolutely. And seeing beautiful things on TV and then looking outside and just seeing bricks and, you know, buildings and, and no trees, no no nature, you know? Yeah, yeah. It's like, where are the horses? Where, where's, where, where's, there, where's this, like, where's this beautiful country and, and where am I, you know? Yeah, that's right. What about, um, what do you remember about, like, other families or other kids who were in the neighborhood? I remember kids being very free. Yeah. I remember them being all over the place. It was, you know, you could, your parents would check in on you, but you had pretty much had free reign to do whatever you wanted. Yeah, yeah, You know, sure. pretty dangerous stuff, like riding 
bikes downstairs and <laughs> and um just kids kids walking outside you know just with other kids yeah. little kids maybe there'll be an older kid with some younger kids that was normal to see kids walking around yeah uh with no obviously no cell phones and no no supervision yeah so i remember kids being very street smart yeah and pretty tough kids yeah Compare it, you know, if you look at kids from other places, the Bronx just makes you instantly be a tough kid. Yeah, sure. It just, you, there's no other way. Yeah. So, uh, that's pretty much what I remember. You know, you just, I can't really say anything negative about childhood being a kid in, in, in the Bronx. Sure. Until I got to my, like, teenager years. Sure. And, you know, you get, you get real grow up and you start to really start, you know, I don't know, how do I say, like, uh, teenage angst and all that stuff comes up, you know? Absolutely. Well, as a child, I was pretty happy. I was a happy, well-meaning, good-hearted kid, yeah. and I, a lot of kids as well that I that I, that I remember. You yeah. know, sometimes I wonder what the heck happened to these kids. You know. Absolutely. Did you go to elementary school in your neighborhood? Yes, I went to PS Thirty One. Okay, PS Thirty One. Okay. Where they tore it down. I mean, it was called the Castle and the Concourse. The Castle and the Concourse. It's a yeah. famous. Yeah, school. I went there and I remember that place. I, I have dreams about that place. Yeah, I remember that place. Just a mysterious school. They would find like hidden things in that school. Like they would move a bookshelf and there'll be like a room there. Wow. And uh, stair staircases, winding staircases, and uh, it was a it was a cool place. I'm sad that it's gone. Me too. Me too. I, I feel like that the way they let it go to pieces like that was really just like a total shame because that's a that was a cool looking school. Man. I've heard so many stories about that school. That school, there's a guy named Mr. Lewis. He was a multimedia guy. Yeah. And he used to Mr. G, the weatherman, used to come over and when it rained, they used to pack all the kids up in the auditorium. Yeah. Pull down like the um, screen yeah. projector, and he had like these old cartoons. Like, black and white cartoons and, yeah. and, and old like early anime Japanese anime type things wow. it was it was cool just to, to experience all that stuff as a kid wow so were you there for the entirety of elementary school I was there from the first grade to the fifth grade I want to say when you all moved, huh? yeah then then we moved and I went to IS 184 I see in the Bronx by Jackson Avenue uh -huh, uh -huh. which was that's when things started to get a little bit rough. Okay, yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah, 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 sure, sure. Um, yeah, why don't you talk some about what, what started to get rough for you? That, um, that was an era, I want to say the early, the late 80s, early 90s, where, you know, there was a lot of tough kids in packs. And yeah. if they would they would take your bus pass, they would take your hats, got my hat stolen one time. Uh -huh. You know, kids came up to me like, give, give me a hat. And I was like, damn it. <gasps> Just got the freaking hat. I kind of was goofing around. One of the kids felt bad for me, yeah. so he gave me his ratty hat. He took my brand new Georgetown oh Hoyas cap. Uh -huh. Even though I didn't know what the hell George where Georgetown was or what a, what a Hoya was. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, everyone else had one, so I was like, cool. I want to be cool like everybody else. So they took that. You know, uh, tough kids. Uh, I had a, a triple fat goose. Remember? I don't know if you how old you are, but it was a big thing to have triple fat goose. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. You know, I had that almost robbed from me. Yeah, from that me. popular item to rob, I think. And it was just a lot of that going on. Yeah. Uh, looking around, going to the bus stop, and just like, oh, trying to look who's coming, waiting for the bus. Like, oh, God, hurry up, get your bus before I get jumped. Uh -huh. um, you have to be careful where you went, you know. Especially at that age, kids were really mean. That's when they started getting mean yeah, yeah. around that age. And young men, they want to, you know, they want to really tough and they get tougher when there's more of them they get even tougher uh -huh, uh -huh. and meaner so I was a pretty good at like o always o avoiding it you know yes, really sir. good at that every now and then I had to deal with it but um that's what it was like it, and it was stressful yeah I bet yeah like you, you get stress anxiety I used to wake up in the morning and go oh, I, gotta, I gotta go take the damn bus and get on the bus and walk to school and deal with school and deal with these guys in the school and go outside and wait for the bus again and hope nothing happens to me and then get on the bus and then it was just constant stress until you got back into the apartment oh, like, oh, shit, okay day's done i'm in one piece i got my hat i got my things i'm okay yes but that for like four years wow. <laughs>
did you have like a group of kids that you hung out with on a regular basis at that point? Mm -hmm. no. I was like Mr. Lonely Boy. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was into my own. I was in my own world. Yeah. I had friends. Hello, how you doing? What's up, man? You know, chit chat with them. But I was like very off to myself. Yeah. And what about siblings? Did you say you have I have an older sister. An older sister. Okay. Yeah. Okay. My dad remarried, and he has he had two kids. So I have like a half brother and half sister. I see. I see. Mm -hmm. I see. But I'm, I'm guessing. Me and my sister are with my mom. Yeah. You know, with your mom, right? So. And she was going through it as well. She had her own. She had her own stories. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so why don't you talk some about um, just a couple other elements of childhood before we get mm -hmm. further into music and all? But um, uh, what are things that you remember eating um, with your family growing up? Eating? Yeah. I was talking to my brother over here, talking about <laughs> Chinese food, <laughs> okay. uh, Chinese food, pizza, uh -huh. Yankees pizza up there right by uh, Morrison, some of you. Absolutely. A um, lot of, you know, rice and beans, sure. chicken, editing, you know, uh -huh. Spanish food. Uh -huh. um, oatmeal in the morning, I eat oatmeal, scrambled eggs, yeah. stuff like that. It's the first thing I learned how to cook was scrambled eggs. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Like Spanish food, Chinese food. Yeah. I cook hood food, hood classic yeah, food. for sure. Every now and then McDonald's because, you know. That was a treat. Yeah, that was like a special thing. You go to that's McDonald's right. or to White Castle. Everybody hates, but I, I love White Castle. Uh -huh. As a matter of fact, I'm going to get some White Castle today. <laughs> yeah, for old time's sake. I, 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 ne I never met a single person who grew up in the Bronx who, who really hates White Castle. I hear people say they do, and the next thing you know, where are you at? You're at White Castle. Yeah, huh? yeah. It's like 3 o'clock in the morning and you're going to get White <laughs> yeah, that's Castle. Right. <laughs> and then you, you only eat it when you're at home because, you know, <laughs> you got to have the bathroom like real quick. <laughs> that's right, that's right. That's Don't right. eat White Castle out on the, on the, on the, on the road. <laughs> We're gonna get stuck. That's right. It's a trap. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, why don't you talk some about the kind of music you remember hearing in your household before you, mm -hmm. you know, really got into it yourself? Well, like I was telling you, I remember hip hop from the beginning. Uh -huh. I mean, uh -huh. it started before me, I, 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 of course. obviously. But as a yeah. young kid, I, I could tell it was different, you know. Yeah. And my dad was into it. We had record player, tons of records. You know, a lot of classic soul and shit like oh sorry oh, sorry. oh no that's fine yeah oh uh, classic soul and mm, commodore Smokey robinson things like that um then it went up to like dance disco stuff of course, uh yeah. freestyle was really big really and, big yep. matter of fact in the uber here the guy was pumping freestyle and i was like wow. this is perfect wow um then it wasn't when i was around you know everything was radio i was the radio was always on yeah sure it was a whether it be remember Hot 103, it wasn't Hot 97, it was Hot 103, uh -huh. then it was Hot 97, and then Z100, Power 95, always on, the radio was always on. Record it, cassette tape, wait for a song to come on, record it, you know. Then I went to, I remember one summer I went to New Jersey, and and my, we, we house sat for like a couple of weeks, and I never heard like real, like rock music. Yeah, sure. Until then, and I saw um, Guns N' Roses, a sweet child of mine. Ah, uh, yeah, <laughs> and yep, I, yep. that was it. That was my doorway to all that stuff. Uh -huh. How old were you at that point? I must have been like ten or eleven. Okay, yeah, yeah. Maybe ten, eleven, twelve. Maybe I, I don't. I don't maybe younger. Maybe maybe eighty-seven. I want to say. Oh, okay. So yeah, yeah. Nine, so I must 10, have been ten something. years old. Like, yeah, that was a young kid. Yes. And I heard that opening riff, and I was like, "What the hell is this?" Uh huh. And then from there, just that's where it escalated. Guns and Roses. I think I think probably about half the people who've done oral history so far, Guns and Roses was the gateway. Oh yeah. Yeah. I yeah. I did the whole glam. I was into that man. Yeah. Guns and Roses, Bon Jovi, Def Leppard. Uh huh. All that stuff. I love that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm not ashamed to admit it. Of either. course. Yeah. You know. It's good stuff. I put my growth onto Def Leppard and all these like old bands. You know. Yeah. Then um, it. Oh, okay. oh no. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, then just I, I would follow the that trends of that. Yeah, you know stuff that was still on the radio. I didn't know about like un, like I didn't know about Slayer or any like really like dark evil stuff. Yeah, until I was much later. My cousin Jason introduced introduced me to all that stuff. Okay, I see. You know, like Slayer, Headbangers Ball, and all that. Yeah, stuff. So that stuff scared me. Yeah, when I was a kid, I was I was in I was used to seeing guys like in spandex doing jumping in the air throwing kicks. You know, doing spins and they got big hair. 
And I was like, man, how come my hair doesn't look like that? <laughs> Why can't I have this cool hair? And I was just like, now I don't have any hair. But um, I was envious of that yeah, life, sure. you know? Sure. Watching these guys going on the stage, all these thousands of people, and I was like, wow, this is this is cool, you know? And then fast forward, Headbangers Ball came around. My cousin's older than me, like a couple years older than me. Yeah. He's a little older and wiser. He's like, oh, that stuff is, we don't like that stuff. is wimpy music. Look at this. I'm watching like Slayer and Morbid Angel. And I was like, what the hell? I was like, turn, turn that off. I don't like that. <laughs> but then, you know, I started to like it. Did you, did your cousin live in the Bronx too? He did. He did. He lived everywhere that we lived. They were like close by him I and see. his mother. They were yeah. like, we always like traveled together, like a little right? caravan. Us. It was me, my mother, my sister, my aunt and my cousin. I see. I see. So we always were together. Yeah. And they moved, they, we split up and they moved to New Rochelle. Oh, we stayed in the okay. Bronx. I see. So we would go there every weekend. Yeah. That's how I saw, you know, cable. Uh, I think I cable to 1996 or something. Oh, okay, okay. So it they was, had it up there. This house where you watch Headbangers. Mm -hmm. oh, I see. Mm -hmm. I see. Do you remember um, the first, uh, like, album that you... Uh, bought or otherwise got you know on your own i remember um it was a guns and roses cassette tape okay okay yeah sure gnr lies okay that yeah. was my f my first real tape yeah you know i bought it at the whiz on third avenue oh i was gonna ask you what record store you yeah went to. okay the it was whiz. the whiz on third avenue way way back in the old worlds yes and um Looking back at that album now, it's very controversial. There's a couple controversial songs on that yeah, on yeah. that record right there. But um, at that time, it, I love you know I, I still love that album. Yeah, sure, sure. That's what that song "Patience" was on. That was a big hit, you know. Uh -huh. But um, that with that, and then my cousin, me and my cousin, we used, there was a mall up there in New Rochelle. Yeah. They used to drop us off at the mall. Me and my cousin and my sister, give us like you know 15, 20 bucks, whatever, if we were lucky. Yeah. And we'll go get records. Uh -huh. And my cousin Jason had like the craziest record collection. I had like rap, metal, everything. So he was very, he was way ahead, more advanced musically than me. I see, I see. So he was like teaching me about like cooler music, better music than the radio stuff. I see, sure, sure. And were you getting into, you know, like hip hop and freestyle and all at the same time you were getting into rock? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, that was always a, just All a regular. Yeah, yeah, because even living, I grew up in 1210 Stratford Avenue, and, and everyone has their windows open, and there's uh -huh. music all day uh -huh. long. Uh -huh. You're going to hear like Lisa Lisa, you're going to hear like rap. That's right. You're going to hear a lot of Spanish music, like yeah. the classic Hector Lavoe type, and also like the newer salsa, like what's the other girl's name? Oh, I'm drawing a blank on her name. La like India and all oh, these yeah, people. Sure, sure, sure. And um, it was. Things were going, but every now and then you will hear rock or metal or like alternative. You will hear it. You don't know where it's coming from, but it's someone else is listening to it. I see. You know, so you it always kept like, oh wow, there's someone else that is into that stuff besides just me. Yeah. So yeah, I don't think I answered. I I don't, I don't no, even know what the question was. Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> um, so in Alex and and Leon's world, you know, they talked about the uh, uh, the boys club. I think it's a Kip's Bay Boys Club. Did you go to that boys club too? Nah. Nah. I, be, I, I went to a karate tournament there once. Oh, okay. Okay. I see. But I, I didn't like hang out there. Yeah. You know, or anything like that. Yeah. I was ma I was basically in my house. I see. And I went from my house to the pizzeria uh -huh. to, to play, you know, video games. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I went to the right across the street to the uh, VHS spot, well, Star Search video. To rent my movies, I would be there for like hours trying to find the right thing to watch or to play because they used to rent the games too. Yeah, sure. And I'll go right back home. I see. I see. My I best see. friend was my TV, uh -huh. my VCR, and my Nintendo or Genesis, or whatever. Sure, sure. Now, this this is an interesting question that hasn't really come up in all this before. But at the pizzeria, what video games did they have? They had everything. You know, Yankees Pizza had everything. Yeah. Everything that was popular, they had. They were smart yeah. when it came to that. They had Street Fighter. You know, Marvel versus Capcom. They had Tekken. Other pizzerias in that area had them as well. Yeah. So if this, if, if Yankees didn't have um, Tekken, you have to walk like three, four, or five blocks to go play Tekken. I see. And it was like a little 
gang of dudes, you know, yeah. that I still talk to to this day, you know, that um, we would bounce back. Every, sometimes we would even put our quarters together and, and take turns. Yeah. And then, you know, games advance and we just, it went from the arcade to the, the house. And yeah. Everyone would right. go to everybody's house and just play video that's games. Right. That's right. Um, what was the first video game system that you had? That I had? Yeah. My father was into video games, so I had Electrex. Oh, man. I don't know if you know what that is. You know no. what I'm talking about? Electrex no. is a little tiny machine. Wow. Where you had vector graphics, where okay. cartridge based, and you would take like a film and put it on the screen, and it would be like the the um, the track. Like, you know, the Pac -Man. instead of Pac Man, okay. it had Clean Sweep. Okay, I see. I see. It was like knockoff games, so I had that. I had ColecoVision, Atari 2600, I had everything. Wow. Like, as they, as the video games progress, I progress with video games. Yeah, sure. Up, sure. In, up until recently, because I can't afford it. Yeah, too I know, much. I, I don't even play video games like that anymore. Yeah, I know. I know. It's expensive as computers now. And I, I, was, I would balance be, between that and the reading, because my mom's a school teacher. Yeah, sure. So reading was always a thing for us. Sure. So I would do both. I would watch, I mean, all three things, watch m movies, play video games, and read comics, or read, like, you know, Lord of the Flies, sure. or I read The Hobbit when I was a kid. Sure, sure, sure. Lord of the Rings, all that stuff. Sure. And as far as, as movies went, what, what kinds of movies were you into? Oh, man, I, uh, look, my father was, obviously, when you're a kid, you look up, you like what your dad likes. Yeah, so yeah. my dad's a martial artist. Ah. Still to this day, yeah. he is... Very passionate about that, as am I in, in some respect. And Shaw Brothers, Kung Fu movies, old school Kung Fu movies, all the way, first uh -huh. first and foremost. Old school Kung Fu movies. I remember watching those a lot because Channel 5 had on um, the Kung Fu Theater on, sat on Saturday afternoons. Yeah. yeah. So we were big into that. You know, my dad was, uh, he raised us very unconventional because like, we were watching, you know, Death Wish, <laughs> like little kids, like a. Radar movies. We I never had a filter when it came to anything, so it was like sure. watch violent things. And I was like, wow, I love it. You know, um, uh, Clint Eastwood movies, yeah. westerns were big too as well. Sure, sure. You know, and then what? And then on TV, I used to watch um, westerns on TV, like Bonanza. And, yeah. Uh, old school stuff, but ninja, the whole ninja craze. I'm still not over that. I still yeah. love all that stuff. Revenge of Ninja, all that good old. All that stuff from the 80s, uh -huh. Chop Saki, Bruce Lee, Chuck Norris, Delta Force. I watched, I rewatched Delta Force a few weeks ago, and it is great. Yeah. Especially the end when he comes up with a motorcycle with the two missiles. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Would you ever go to, like, Times Square for the, the Kung Fu movies they showed um, there? No, I mean, that was, I was, that was past my... I didn't get a chance to really do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, towards the end, I remember Times Square. I was the very end of the old Times Square. I remember I've been around there those those times. I see, I see, I see, I see. Yeah. You know, but I didn't get the chance to like see a kung fu movie, like a classic, in the theater. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Yeah, that's too bad. Too bad. No. Yeah, I I, re I wish. I know. Were there were there movie theaters in the Bronx? Have you remember going? Yeah. To? Number one, White Stone Cinema. You White pay Stone for one movie, you see sure. them all. You pay for one movie, you see them all. <laughs> um... <laughs> Uh, Parchester had, I think it was called the American or the Quad, Parchester. At one point they had like, I think maybe three movie theaters in Parchester, I forget. Yeah, right Parchester there. had one right there, right in Parchester, yeah. by the, I don't even, I'm bad with, with the directions. Like the Going up towards like Union Port, there yeah. was another one. Yeah. And that's all I remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you go to... You I never went to the one in Grand, like the one in Grand Congress, I never, yeah. I never went to that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a white stone. A lot of memories there. They had a lot of good video games there as well. Uh huh. Sure. And they kept up with it. Oh, they had to. It's a movie theater. Yeah. Um, the one in Parchus, the one by Unionport Road, and that was it. But we yeah. we'd walk there. You know, wow. that's I remember that too. It's a lot as a kid, walking yeah. everywhere. Yeah. Like far. Yeah. You know, with like this, <laughs> and maybe fifty cents <laughs> in your pocket or a dollar. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Not even this, like the little quarter waters. Oh, yeah, the little quarter waters, yep. Like, how do we survive? <laughs> no supervision. Yeah. Hot, yeah. right? It's hot outside. We got no money and literally hardly anything to drink or eat. <laughs> and you're gone the whole the whole day. Yeah. Yeah. Wild. Yeah. Wild. 
Um, so when you were in junior high, I mean, I know you obviously were with with your cousin mm -hmm. some, but were there other people who were interested in rock music? Yeah, I had all? I had like a little group of guys that I hung out with. Yeah. A guy named Poochie, who was my next door neighbor. Uh -huh. A guy named Spike, who lived on the block. My friend Lance, us three, which it was a Puerto Rican, a Puerto Rican Dominican, a Honduran, and a Jamaican. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And we all hung out for years and years. We would play like Dungeons and Dragons and yeah. um, watch movies together. We'd go look for bootleg movies. Yeah, sure. You know, back in the day, if you had 10 bucks, you could probably get like three movies. Yeah. Kung Fu, anime, um, by bootleg video games. They were doing that back at the time as well. Sure. Um, we had a little, a little core group of young, nice guys, you yeah. know? But we knew all the bad, tougher kids, street kids. Yeah. We knew them. They liked us. We liked them. But they did that, and we did our thing. Yeah, sure. But it was always around us. Yeah. Always, all, crime was always around us. Yeah. Crime was always around Drugs was always around us. Anything can happen at any moment, and you understand that as a child, growing up in that environment. You know, you you could have fun, but you, something could always go south, and you gotta like yep. leave or figure out a way to not even be in the mix. You know? Yeah. So there's a lot of that. I, I feel like sometimes I watch these nature programs about like mice or whatever, or little desert mouse. I'm like, I gotta relate to this. <laughs> <laughs> you know. That's right. Yeah. So we had a nice little click, and that's how I met Will. I met Will through, I think I believe I met Will through my friend Spike or Lance, one of those two. And I used to walk around, I want to say when I was like 17 or 18, with like a boombox. Uh -huh. uh -huh. And instead of listening to rap music, I was listening to corn. Wow. And Deftones and a whole pump tool like in the hood, you know. <laughs> and I guess that that's how me and Will kind of met. And then I found out he was in a band. Yeah. I thought that was cool. I see him walking down with his bass guitar. I see, I see. And I was like, oh, shit. And then, I don't know how we actually started talking, but there was a show coming up. Did, we, did anyone ever talk about the show Malali Skate Park? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That famous sure. show, yeah. I see. That was my first taste of, like, hardcore. Oh, okay. You went to that show. Yeah, I was wow. there. Wow. Yeah, I remember I was wearing everything. I had a fresh Jive t-shirt on, and... Jean shorts, uh -huh. jorts, uh -huh. <laughs> and I was a virgin at that time. <laughs> so you know I had that, that rage in me. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, so that was my first show. Wow. And I remember, I remember it being a kind of a mess too. Like I know Will played, and then like somehow like mini riot broke out. People were throwing chairs at each other, yes. and it became kind of crazy. Yes. And I was like, I like this. <laughs> you remember who, what, what other bands were that? I don't remember the other bands, but I do remember the Iron Sheik. Uh -huh. or, uh, or either the real one or a fake one was yes. wrestling there. Yes. Like he was wrestling there and like Will was playing over there. Yes. What a bizarre weirdo. And the train is going by and it's like, what is going on? What kind of like parallel world are we living in? So, yeah, something I, I forget exactly the connection, but there there was some there was some connection even like some family member of Iron Sheik who has some connection to the hardcore world. I, I forget the connection, but I, someone was talking about it. Oh yeah? yeah, that that was so even at that age I was I just had that what the hell is going on? <laughs> but I just I, I was going with the going with the flow, you know. Yeah, I don't remember how I got there. Yeah, I don't remember how I got there. The ride there, I don't know how I even knew about it. I think he told me about it. Well, maybe I went with Will. Yeah. Maybe. I don't remember because I know I worked with him to a couple of shows Yeah, at that time. Because there was also a big, I don't know if it's a famous show in the Bronx history world, the Bronx hardcore history. It was in the backyard somewhere. Yes. Uh, at Poe Avenue, maybe? Does that sound right? Nah. It, I, 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 I thought it was about Castle Hill. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't remember the street there, but yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, I, that's another famous one. Maybe yeah. I Rate was at that I one. Rate, and it started raining during I, I Rate was, set. I Rate's first show, maybe, even, at that one. Really? Because I think... Will miss, from what I remember, Will misheard their name as Iraq, so they were billed as Iraq on the, oh, on wow. the show at that one. Uh, but I think it was their first, maybe second show, but it was one of their first shows at that uh, one. Yeah. Yeah, I remember, I, the Iraq thing was funny. I, I, I didn't know about that right. one. I didn't know about that one. Who are you, you going to see tonight? Iraq. <laughs> Why? But um, yeah, I remember that show. I remember walking there in a group. 
big group of us. I think it was Will, me, Jerry, Spike, Poochie, a bunch of kids from Stratford Avenue. Walked from Stratford to Castle Hill. The show happened. There was a lot of people in that backyard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of heavy, heavy mosh pit going on. Mosh pitting. Yes. I remember there was one guy that he would be at all the shows. Tall, lanky, skinny guy with dreadlocks. And he would just go wild. <laughs> And I was like, I gotta watch out for this. It's gonna hurt me. But, um, yeah, I remember that show, man. And I think Rice Reserve played that show, too. Uh huh, uh huh. Rice Reserve. Maybe? What, I believe so. I believe it was that, you know, all the BDC kids. Yep. That's and, right. um, I rate was the last band, I believe, and it started raining, and it was just like epic, man. Wow. I wish there was some video of that. I know. This is like pre video anything. It's I like know. you had to be there. If you were there, you remember. If you weren't there, then it just goes into like the, the, the legend of the lore or whatever. I know. That's true. That's true. But I was there. And I remember like I was starting, I was really starting to like it. I liked it because it was anyone can do it, you know? Uh huh. Anyone can do it. And it was, it was like violent. It was dark and violent. And, and when you're a kid, for me, I liked it because it was like you're you're fighting without like really getting into it, but you're like, you know, you're marching, you're moving around, and it's like you're you're feeling that aggression, you feel that yeah. like, and at that age, young men, young teen boy men, they have that. Yeah, yeah, sure. And that's a good way for it to, to, to for it, for them to like let it loose. That's right. That's right. Without getting into crazy trouble, you know. That's right. That's right. And and getting picked up by other people if you know you fall. Yeah, if you fall down, be <laughs> yeah. People are not, not going to stomp you on the ground. They're going to help you back up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it had that vibe to it as well. Yeah. Um, so were you at, were you in high school by this point? Um, was I in high school? Because I guess... Oh, heck, heck no. I, I, loved, okay. I loved high school. Okay, yeah. I, I see, I, once that era came around, I was like, no one can control me. And my mom, yeah. God bless her, I was like, Mom, I'm going to do whatever I want. I yeah, did, sure, I did sure, whatever sure. I want. I was just on the streets, okay, sure, running sure. around, doing whatever. Sure. You know? And... um. Eventually, I got my GD. You know, it's me and you know, we never really. I like to read and do my own study, my own way. Absolutely, absolutely. But um, I was I was working, I believe. Okay, sure. I think I was like pumping gas or something. Okay. I was pumping gas in okay. Sunoco up there in um, by Riverdale. Oh, oh my dad, like my dad eventually. Yeah, like my, eventually my dad started working up there, and I started working. He he became a super up there. Okay, and okay, I started I working at like a gas station. And, I had like a, a room somewhere up there. I forget. It's I been see. so long, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, uh, it was during that era. That back when a, a cab from the West Bronx to like Stratford was like eight bucks, eight or nine bucks. Wow, wow. Now it's forget about it. You know. I know. So I would take a lot of cabs. Yeah, sure. From sure. there back and forth, a it's lot, really a lot. Easy way to get from there to. Mm -hmm. And then pumping gas at the time, I befriended cab drivers and then. Uh -huh. They would just pick me up, and I didn't have to wait around. They'd come get me at like seven o'clock. Wow! So yeah, you bring making me doors are opening up in this old uh, brain here that I forgot about. <laughs> now, now, do you remember? Um, uh, you know, I guess before you went to the shows, had you really heard any um, Bronx bands before? Yeah, yeah. We used to, I used to go to me and Will and Henry. Yeah, I they they let me tag along with them a lot. I would go to Castle Heights. Okay, yeah, sure. Shows where I used to see I saw right there a lot. I want to say I saw Driven My Hatred there, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, okay. Uh, Candiria. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And a lot of the death metal bands. Sure. And that's the time when hardcore and metal were really, like, yes, getting together. And it was, like, death metal and hardcore. And that era. And I was always, I was there. But I was always, like, in the background, sure, watching sure. everybody else. Sure, you know, I remember one show at Castle Heights. You know, this this one particular girl was like moshing really hard and kicking people and crowd killing everybody, and she, I felt like she was targeting me. She was like elbowing me and kicking me, and I was like, God damn! Everywhere I went, they couldn't get away from this fucking crazy girl, <laughs> and it was Gigi. It was Gigi. I'm not surprised. I was gonna ask if it was Gigi. <laughs> just wants to beat me up everywhere I go <laughs> and then you know maybe a year after that I went to a party yeah. with Will and a couple of friends from the, from Stratford and she was there 
and we hung out, and then years later, we were with a band together. Yeah, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. Wow. Um, yeah. What about uh, these? This is like, I guess the the generation before a lot of this that you're talking about. Uh, generation, you know, two mm -hmm. or three years. But mm -hmm. were you, were you ever into, or did you ever see? Like District Nine or Fahrenheit Four Fifty One perform? Uh, I see. Um, I saw them practice. Oh, okay, years okay. later after they like, or after all, I missed that whole era. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. But I, you know, Gigi was with them later on as well. So I used to see some of them here and there. I think when they were practicing, I've seen them here and there, but I've never yeah. went to a show. Okay, sure, sure. sure. I, I don't know their music. No offense. I don't. I, I don't know. Like, there's some hardcore bands. Like, I know their names. Yeah, sure. But I, I don't really listen to them. Out of all the bands from the Bronx, the only ones I listened to were Irate, number uh -huh. one. Uh -huh. Which is, guys, I always loved that band. Yes. And number two was Rice Reserved. Absolutely. And that was pretty much it. Those were my two Bronx bands. Sure. Irate more than anything. Sure. Because I felt like I could really feel like this guy, he's for real, man. Absolutely. And there were other bands in the Bronx. There was another band in the Bronx. That they, you would never, I don't know, You maybe you might interview them, but I doubt it. Yeah. I really highly doubt it because they don't even, they're not in the count. Like the level of these other bands yeah. that were like real, for real guys. These guys, they were, I don't want to mention their name. I don't want to, you know, talk shit or anything, but they were very corny to me. And they were trying to be like uh, um, mainstream and become famous. They okay. had like... They have like this kind of like egotistical like we're gonna we're gonna be the best. I see. And that was in, that was also like a reason like I was in my mind I was like yeah I want, I want to be in a band so I could blow these guys out of the. <laughs> water. I like I took it like a competition in my own mind. I didn't really tell anybody that, but yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, but I um, see. The, they were Bronx band, and you said talking about Bronx band, so yeah, it sure. was only pretty much irate and Rice Reserve. It was more irate than Rights Reserved. Even though I do I did like Rights Reserved, but it was irate for me. Irate, the yeah. tape was always in my walk, sure. man. every somewhere in my bag it was the irate tape. And then sure. you know the the compilations and all that. Absolutely. Absolutely. So um you mentioned Oh I'm sorry oh, and, no, and, and blackout and blackout. Oh and blackout. Sorry, blackout. yeah blackout. <laughs> sure. Had to can't forget about blackout man. Yeah, that's right. That's I right. still quote I still quote Blackout songs. Right? Okay, and, yeah, yeah, And yeah. I wish Will, Henry, Gary, just like, do one more thing. Just for fun. What? They were talking about it, so hopefully they'll, they'll come through. <laughs> That'll be so... It'll be fun for about like 10 or 15 dudes. I'm like, yes! <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Blackout! <laughs> and the logo was so cool, too. That was Yo. designed by pa Pablo. Did you, were you friends with I Pablo? Or, no. uh, one of their neighborhood friends. But... I have no idea who did that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I remember it being like black and white. It had a skull. Uh -huh. It was like an eye. Maybe like a pirate thing going on. Yep. I don't know. Yep. That's right. Yeah. Um, so at any point during all of this, were you like thinking about being in a band i was already in a band in my brain okay. oh okay in yeah, my yeah. mind i was in my fake band in my head okay sure you know but um i always wanted it i always wanted to try it yeah i just didn't know how and i felt too shy to do it i was also pretty quiet and reserved off to my like i said off to myself yeah i was not quiet when i was with my friends like i was joking around but when i wasn't i was pretty you would see me but you wouldn't really hear me i see i see but for some reason, Will and Dean thought I could do it, you know, so they gave me a shot. Yeah. Yeah. But I guess at that point, you, you've you been into the music for for a while at mm -hmm. that point, I guess, right? Because mm -hmm. when, did, when did Johnny Cage is a fake? What was the year that it... The way that I remember it was that me, Will, and Dean, and Will's little brother, Steven... We went to the North Six in Brooklyn, which is, doesn't exist anymore, I don't think. Yeah. And we saw the Mars Volta ah. before the album came out. They were touring for the EP. Okay. Because after At the Driver we broke up. Wow. I don't know if you know you knew At the Driver. Yeah, 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 sure. Which is another ins big inspiration for me. After I heard that guy screaming, I was like, I want to do that type of screaming. Uh huh. Because I don't know, like, there's a difference between the way I was screaming and the way like Godamentis or Irene was Absolutely. screaming. Like, they, they were more tough and gruff, and I was more like, 
they're like more like gorillas, and I was more like a like a screaming baby. Yes. You know, yeah, 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 yeah. raging sure. tantrum kid. Sure. So um, I wanted to do it like that. So we went to Mars Volta, and then the conversation came up outside, I guess, and and then w- within the week or so, they booked the studio. I think I funked the if I'm not mistaken. Uh-huh. And we went there, Gigi was there, and I was like, oh shit, what's up, you know? I haven't seen her since forever. You know, I did see her in her old band, Proof of Purchase. Proof of at, Purchase, sure. Play at Spiral and Pyramid, I think. Like, I, I, so I went to see them play. I know Will was in one of those bands, I think Proof of Purchase. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah and um, we went in the studio. That's not, it, we, we just, we went, I was in the show, next thing you know, I was on the train with Will going to the studio to, to try to be in a band with them. Wow. And wow. that's how it started. Wow. And was, so was, was Gigi already in the band at that they, point? They, she was there. I think how it happened was Dean had a riff because Dean was the riff master. Yeah, yeah. You know? Everything was like, whatever it was in his mind, the guy's like out there with his riffs. Yeah. So he would do it, and then Will was, they have that, that vibe, so sure. he would just like, and then Gigi could do anything to, uh-huh. with anything. Yes. You know? She can make music with anybody. Yeah. So they had something, which turned out to be that, that song, Cujo, that's the first one. Ah, I don't know if you ever heard see. it. I have, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the first it was song that one. Ah, and I see. they were doing the first, maybe half of that song, over and over and over again, and I was just there like... I couldn't, I didn't know how to do it, man. Yeah. I didn't even know if I could do it. I was like, in my mind, I was like, this is stupid. This is not, you know, I, I can't even do it. But you did it. <laughs> yeah, that, eventually I did it. I didn't, I didn't wow. know I could do it. It's like when you, um, I felt like it's like in that scene in Spider-Man when the guy finds out he has like a secret power. And I was yeah. like, oh, shit, I, could, I can't believe I did that. Yeah. Hearing it on tape, I was like, holy shit. That's me? Uh-huh. And that's how it started. Wow. Wow. Now, before we continue on with Johnny mm-hmm. Cage is a fake, let's just um, uh, fill in a little bit more of your, your musical uh, development. And why don't you talk some more about some of the different shows you went to or, around mm-hmm. New York, outside New York, whatever, you know, mm-hmm. if you went to shows outside New York, but ones that stuck with you um, as far mm-hmm. as the shows go. The one that stuck with me, the well, the first show I went to was even hardcore. Yeah, oh, what was that? I went to go see Wilco. Ah, Wilco. Okay, okay, okay. Wilco is like a con- alternative country band. A yeah. place called Tramps, where they doesn't exist. I think it was like in the twenties, twenty third. I don't remember. Okay, okay. And I liked yeah. it. Yeah. It was tra- it was this band called Blue Mountain, and they opened up for Wilco, and it was like bluegrassy Americana, like wow. country. From, and I was in the Bronx, so I was listening yeah. to. So I was listening to Jay, the Jayhawks at that time as well, and um. That was a big show for me, and then the, the the next show for me was when I went to go see Corn. Oh, oh wow! I went to go see Corn at the Roseland with the Far Side, the rap group yeah, opening sure. up for them, and I thought that was crazy. That was yeah. Wow. I was like, you can't even get any heavier than this man. Yeah, I know. And they got like, they they're screaming and yelling, but they got like the hip hop like street vibe yeah that's i dug it but a lot of the bronx bands didn't like that like yeah i know like a lot of the bdc i thought that was like soft whack shit yeah yeah yeah. but i loved it yeah and i know the alex and leon yeah they liked it yeah that rice reserve kind of had like that vibe as well the the riffs and the way they the beats like alex has that that like he's like he's a metal guy but he's also a rap hip-hop that's right so he would throw like the, the hip hop beats, and Gigi would do the same thing. They had the hip hop kind of like bounce to the way they played drums. That's right. That's why he was a perfect dude to, you know, when Gigi went off to her, her adventures, yeah. he'd, he'd pop right in and he'd fit in like super fast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Then when I, my, my, the most famous show for me was when I went to see At the Drive In. Ah, uh, okay, okay. At, I, mean, um, okay, yeah. I want to say uh, Bowery Ballroom. I see. I see, I see. And forget about it. I was like, this is nuts for me. Yeah. Uh, uh, and then Glassjaw, CBGBs. Uh-huh. Those types of bands were, when it, when it came to screaming, I liked that style of screaming. Sure, sure. Uh, Glassjaw, uh, at the drive-in, Thursday. Uh-huh. That type of screaming. I see, I see. It wasn't, it wasn't like really the gruff, like tough sure. shit. It was like more like the regular guy, like nerdy screaming. Sure, absolutely, absolutely. 
Wow. Um, after, uh, uh, sorry. Oh, no, go ahead. A- after, uh, so after driving, I like got rid of all my shitty music. Yeah. And I just I had the whole discography up on all the CDs that, that, on that show. Yeah. And then he broke up like fairly soon after. And I was like, great. <laughs> But um, yeah, that was a big show for me, and then with the Mar- that Martin Volta show with, sure. Will, with Will and Dean. Sure. Wow. Wow. And uh, why don't you talk a little bit more about, um, you know, like uh, how you find new music? Like, you know, as as you already got into like more the underground mm-hmm. scene, like what are ways that you would discover new music? I would read magazines. Yeah. You know, I didn't have the internet. So much later in my life. Yeah, sure. So sure. I would I would read magazines. I was in this Manhattan a lot, so I would go to like uh, Tower Records, uh-huh. Tower Video. I eventually started working there. Everybody, everybody worked there. Will worked there. Alex worked Tower Records. I worked at Tower Records. Yeah. And some in some forms, uh, uh, some form or another. Yeah, sure. So I read magazines. Yeah. And stay up late. When the cable came out, and I'll look at whatever's around. Well, you know. I kept up with it through other media. Yeah, sure. Besides the internet, but I would keep up with it. Sure. Little underground magazines you would see here and there that'll pop up. Yeah. Um. So did you? I know. I know. Um. You said you know you, you wanted to be in a band a long a long time before Johnny Cage was a fake. Um. Did you ever like uh, try to play any instrument? Yeah, yeah, like yeah, 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 yeah. What yeah. instruments? Did guitar. You guitar. Yeah. 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 Like I would always. I had someone teach me some chords and stuff okay. back when yeah, I was sure. a teenager. And I will just fiddle around with the guitar. I still do it to this day, you know? Yeah, yeah. Just nothing, nothing fancy. Just yeah, sure. Just playing around with it. But um, I was I always like vocals more than anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. More than like the instruments. Yeah, sure. I always listen to vocals first. Yeah. Most, uh, most people find it too, you know? Mm-hmm. Like if the voice sounds, does something to my brain, it gives my brain a tingle. Yeah. Oh my God, I like I like this person. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Um, so when Johnny Cage is a fake, uh, do you remember your first performance? Yeah, yeah. It was at the Red Zone in Queens. Okay, okay. And With, how, how was that? It was it was cool. I mean, I was scared. I bet. I was scared, man. I bet. But a lot of people watched us. Yeah. And they 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 didn't. Johnny Cage didn't really wasn't really a mosh heavy band, but people would stop what they were doing and, and watch us yeah so they watched us and it was it was cool you know after it was over people that i thought were gonna be like that was terrible or like yo that was crazy man i can't believe that can't. and i i didn't i was just i was happy with it but i, I my, that fear that performance fear just lasted for like years yeah sure I, before a show i would be a wreck yeah be nervous so i would be like you know what i'm gonna quit this quit this band's crap yeah, but um, I always did it. Afterwards, I always felt better after I did it. You know. Yeah, 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 yeah. I kind of had a feeling on the way over here on the Uber. Like, damn, I feel nervous doing this. Yeah, no, I know. But once you do it, do something, you get past that nervous that you do it. Afterwards, you feel like the you know the weight's lifted off your shoulders. You feel right. better. But the first show was cool. The last this band called Last Perfection played, which was like a bigger like metal core because they used to play with other bigger bands. So that was. That was a good first show, I feel. Wow. Do you remember the other bands that played? It was just you and... Last, Last Perfection, Perfection and a band called Swear to God from Boston who are okay. a real tough, tough, tough band. Okay, yeah. Like, tough, hardcore, Boston, beat down, <laughs> they got to mess you up type man. I see, I see. And um, they were cool with us too. And, yeah, well, Dean, well, Dean's friend came to that show. Yeah. And he had a job interview that very next day when Swear to God came on, the very last band. He got hit right in the face and broke his freaking nose. <laughs> <laughs> and I had to go to the interview the next day. I believe he got his job, but um <laughs> he was the one the one casualty of that, wow. of that show. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Um, and what are some of the other shows that you remember with Johnny Cage as the favorite? Yo, Johnny to? Cage, we would well, in New York, all the CBTV shows. Okay. How many oh, times uh, you have played CBTVs? Uh, Will and Dean will probably know more than me. Okay. Yeah. I can remember at least three, three or four. Wow. Yeah. Wow. I remember playing a show there, and then every they, after the show was over, 
everybody left, but we get to stay behind, like hang out and see if you go to the back. It was crazy, man. Just having free range of that place. Wow. Um, so those were always good. Knitting factory shows. Uh-huh. ABC No Real shows. Sure. Which to me were some of my favorites because it was so small and it felt like at any moment that whole building could just like yes. <laughs> collapse and we all could die, be all the news. And like, oh, a band was playing and everybody died. <laughs> and um, uh, a lot of house shows, you know, backyards and, okay, and basements sure. and stuff. And then the the ones that were the wildest were when we got Dean got a van and and we started going out far, far, far. Okay, like where all would you go? We never went to the. We went as I believe we went as far as the mid, like the Midwest. Okay, the, the, the middle, middle America, middle yeah. America. We never went all the way to the West Coast in, yeah, sure. in the van. But from like the middle of America, up north, down south, you know, like northeast, this side of America. I see, I see. Down wow. here, up here, and around here. Wow. Over here, uh, we wanted to, but then we broke up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But um, those were, it was like, now we're really, now we're really in a, the adventure out here. We're yeah. Like nowhere, driving all night long. We got some crazy, crazy road stories out there. I bet, I bet. Yeah, what was the craziest place that y'all played that you remember? The place that I didn't like the the most was Kentucky. Okay, yeah. I did not feel comfortable there. I was like, can we get the hell out of here? Let's get some chicken first, and then let's get the hell out of here. That's right. um, Kentucky I didn't like. I didn't like. um, There was a Tennessee. Okay, I remember yeah. one time we pulled up to this place in Tennessee. Graceland is close by there. Yeah. We pulled up to the place we're supposed to play. We get out. This is when Alex was in the band. We get out, walk up to the place. It just has like bullet holes. Like if somebody took a gun, it was like going, going crazy. And I was like, and there's still fresh glass on the floor. And I was like, oh my God. What are we, what are we doing? What are we do? We're trying to escape this shit. And we're over here. And it's got bullet holes, glass. Uh huh. We played the show anyway, but um, one time we played a show. I think it was it was deep upstate New York. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Olean, New York. O L E A N. Okay. I believe they make the K bar knives up there. There's a K bar knife factory uh, up there. I see. I see. I see. I remember getting out and going to get to the store. I wanted like a Snapple or something. Yeah. And seeing this one child that he didn't look right. <laughs> so this guy. And then I noticed other people that didn't look right. Uh-huh. I was like, there's something wrong with this place. Yes. All right. So then I asked around, and apparently there's that's a thing out there. There's a lot of, like, uh, familial uh-huh. inbreeding out there. There's some, like, weird-looking, toxic Avenger-looking motherfuckers. Out there. <laughs> and um, we played the show, right? And then the show was over. We were going to crash at this person's house. It was snowing like crazy. We parked the car in the middle of this parking lot which is weird uh-huh. to walk like two blocks away we get to this place and you have to walk up these stairs and i'm walking up the stairs i'm taking a smell i'm like i i, I know this smell this i know this stench we get up there we see all these kids around they're smoking and long story short they're smoking, they're smoking like crack uh-huh. all right they're smoking uh-huh. crack and i told will and dean yo we gotta get out of here this motherfucker just smoking crack bro. yeah 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 and we'll do all right you know we, actually we're gonna go we're gonna go we went back because i feel like a setup too man i feel like they're gonna rob the van i know they're that's what it sounds bring like. us away <laughs> and they can rob the van uh-huh. so we, we we make it back to the van in a snow storm not, not, not like not like flurries <laughs> dude snow storm and we drive hours and hours to another this other band's place that we were supposed to meet the following day. Yeah. We just met them the day be- the night before. Yeah. Wow. So that was crazy. <laughs> and then one another time, dude, I got bad all these yeah, crazy yeah, stories. Yeah. Let's see like her. one time we, we stayed at a campground, I yeah. think in North Carolina. Okay. And we're walking around the like, little campground. We come back and the whole campground is full of raccoons. <laughs> where, 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 where all our shit is. <laughs> so Will Early that day, he went to like one of these like little like uh, I think we went on a cave tour. We did something, something like that, yeah. And he bought a slingshot. Okay. So yeah. he just picked up a rock and started using, started <laughs> those, uh, hitting the raccoons. They would they would all run away, and okay, and then we would walk away again, and they would they would like coming back. <laughs> so um, we had to like flip a coin and see who slept in the tent, and who slept in the van. 
And me and Will were lost. We had to see what it said. So it was like all night long. Well, he was like, <laughs> <laughs> they're fighting with each other. They're, they're like grabbing me at the tent. Uh-huh. And Will just fell asleep. <laughs> I was awake and I, I, I held my pee all night, bro. I was like, I'm not opening this tent for nothing. One time in the middle of nowhere, Tennessee, I think, we, uh, we pulled up in like a camp, campground and there was no one there, it's completely empty, and these dudes just come out of the woods. Uh-huh. And they oh. were like, hey, what are you guys doing? Oh, we're in a band, we're traveling. Oh, you guys want to start a fire? They, they went back into the woods with all these leaves and sticks and they made a big ass fire for us. You know, I was so exhausted, I just was like, all right, good night, I, just, I fell asleep. But um, little things like that, you know? So the, the van was one time we were we were driving around this like dirt road and the van started smoking in the middle of nowhere. Luckily, we survived. Yeah. Things like that I loved. I, I loved it. It was like we're living like adventure, yeah, we're living in right. like real adventure times. I like that more than actually going to the show, getting there, and bringing the things and what's up. You know, it's playing the show. I didn't like that stuff too much. This is sure. why pretty much they went to do Tiger Files, but I was like. I already did. I already said what I had to say. Did what I want to do. I was. I was pretty much like I'm good. Yeah. I didn't like the, the actual playing the show. I see. I, see. I like being in the studio sure. and making new shit. Yeah. That's what I like. Like ideas and art ideas and stuff. But the, the physically playing the show was not my was not my favorite sure. part. Sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, when you joined the band, did they already have the name? No. Do you remember how? You all came up with the name? It was in a car in the Bronx. It was me, Will, Dean. Dean's friend was an actor. He was on a, a show on, on NBC called Chuck. Okay. And we were all talking about movies, whatever. And I believe I was the one that talked about the Johnny Cage or Johnny Cage the Twig. And then we all kind of agreed that that was a cool name. In my mind, it was my. it came out of my brain. But yeah. may, maybe they see it differently. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then we told Gigi and she liked it. So yeah. I was like, okay, so that's what we're going to be. And what about, um, what about like the writing of the lyrics? What are, what are things that, um, you know, like inspired you the most in writing the lyrics? Were you the, one, the main one? Mm-hmm. The yeah. I was the only one doing that's that. That's what I thought. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I would just, um, I would just, I wanted to. I wanted to express myself. I know I had a lot of like anger and stuff. I wanted to to like get out of me, you sure. know. Sure. And I would do it differently because the way Dean, his riffs were very, you know, the mathematical. Yeah, yes. yeah. Mathematical. So I, would, I this is how I did it. I would have a piece of paper and I would listen to the the practice and I would be you know, like, and I would draw a line every time, like a long line, a little, uh, like a medium sized line or a tiny line. Okay, yeah. Like, like that. Uh-huh. And then I'll try to put words on top of the lines and try to figure it, like, my, this puzzle in my mind. And they would, like, write themselves, sort of. And I would just... Sometimes they would make sense. Sometimes they wouldn't make sense to me. But then I would figure out a way for them to make sense to me. I that see. would take, like, a while. I see. Wow. So, yeah, you're... I don't know if anybody else ever did like that. That's, that's it's hard because play, yeah. Dean, Dean, and, and Will and Gigi's music, it's it's crazy. Yes, yes, it, is. it It was making me crazy. Yeah. It was turning me into a crazy person, <laughs> where I couldn't be normal. Yeah, like I, I, I was constantly like on the train, listening to. I'm like, how am I gonna? <laughs> And I'm on the train, like, I remember one time, I was, <laughs> one time I was on the train, and, I, and I'm like, I have the headphones on, right? But the it's the, it's not on, are we running out of time? We good? Oh, no, no, we're good, we're good, yeah. The back before they have the AirPods, and you know, plug it in? Yeah. It wasn't plugged in, but I had the song in my head, but I had the earphones in to block out the, um, the ambient sounds, and I'm like, <laughs> and then I'm looking at this guy looking at me, and I'm like, and I look down, the thing's not even plugged in, so he probably thinks I'm fucking <laughs> crazy. I was so embarrassed, but I was like, oh, well, I'm never going to see this guy again. That's right. That's right. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it was a lot of notebooks, a lot of craziness, 
with Dean Will and Gigi's music, it was, I was a crazy person back then. Yeah. Like, I was out of my mind. Yeah. You know? Are, are there, you know, any songs, you know, maybe one, two, three songs whose lyrics, like, you're particularly proud of or that you connected with the most? Well, I do have a song that's straight up about the Bronx that, that is probably my favorite song. Yeah. You know, maybe one day after this, I can give you the lyrics. You can read it. To, I can write it down for you. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. we never, we never, we oh, always, never, we always meant to. It, huh? Never. No, we recorded. Oh, okay, okay. Which what, what's the what's the title? Which Destruction of Steps. Oh, Destruction of Steps. That's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah, um, yeah which yeah. is from a, something uh, Will's brother said that was funny at the time. I don't remember the joke, but I know it was funny, so I just wanted to call it. I don't know what the hell even what Destruction of Steps even means. Yeah. But it was something that he said that made me laugh, so I turned it into a song, a title. Yeah. Um, but, um, yeah, I could do that for you. We, I, we never wrote the lyrics down on the CD or on the, anywhere. I, we always meant to, and I was supposed to do it for the record. I see. And I didn't do it. I see. I see. I took too long. Yeah. Yeah. Do, do you remember them off the top of your head? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I remember, like, 90% of them. Okay, okay, sure. Some of them, I'm like, I forget. Yeah, yeah. But then you know, I I I last heard the album a couple weeks ago, and I pretty much yeah. remembered the whole thing. I see, I see, yeah. And they did a good job remastering and all that stuff on Spotify. It just sounds brand new. Sure. That's the other thing that Will Dean and Gigi emphasized. You know, I was stuck in a brain because I'm not a musician like they are. Yeah. I wanted to do more things that other bands were doing, uh -huh. and they wanted to do things that these bands were not doing. Yes. They wanted to make it sound completely different, completely different from everything that was around us. Yes. Like, we played with a lot of metalcore bands, and did the course. same yeah. shit over and over again. Uh -huh. And they didn't want that. They didn't care if nobody understood it. As long as a couple people understood it, you know, but they just want to do their own thing. And I, res I grew to respect that. And now, yeah. years later, I'm like, damn, they were way ahead of me in my thinking. Sure. I sure. mean, because if you listen to it now, the thing could have came out in 2024. I know. It could have came out now. I know. It sounds insane. I know. And I'm like, wow, man, these guys are really, really onto something. And they were really, really great musicians, man. Absolutely. Like, Absolutely. I was so lucky to not have to deal with a first band with shitty guys. Yeah, yeah. I was dealing with some heavy hitters, man, that these riffs, the way Will plays, the GG. I know. A maniac. I so I was I was really blessed, man. Yeah. And they always gave me respect. They never shit on me. Yeah. They always were like, yo, you sound good, man. You keep doing this and keep trying this, try that. You know, Will, Will give me advice because he was in bands. And yes. they all gave me advice and stuff. I mean, encouraging towards me. Sure. So I was looking at that aspect as well. Now, where would you all record? What recording studio did you record your two? Man, the first, the first things, the EPs were recorded like in the studio, on tape. Oh, I see. Okay, okay, sure, and, sure. And which are still floating around there somewhere. Yeah. Then the actual CD was recorded in some kid's basement in New Jersey. I don't even know the, the Clarity oh, Studio. Okay, okay, okay. I see. I see. Some kid. Yeah. And he did it there. And then when Gigi left, I think she went to Africa or Senegal or something like that. Yeah. And Alex took over. We recorded it in the same, with the same kid. The same kid, I see. Mm -hmm. I see. Um, and uh, I know you, you said you enjoyed being in the studio and all. Um, why don't you talk some more about your experience doing the actual recording and what it was like for you? It was boring as hell because it was yeah. like I had to listen to, to Dean do his, first of all, Dean went. Uh -huh. And that took a long time. Yes. Then Will went. That took a long time. And then Gigi or Slash or Alex went. That took another long time. Then knew I went and I just did it fast. Okay, yeah, like, sure, sure, sure. It took like, you know, fast. Every now and then I would have to stop, but mostly I just, like, I would knock that shit out. Bro, like, give me the mic and just like, oh, wow, yeah. Wow, mm -hmm. wow. Um, and, uh,. As far as like um, once you, you you made your first uh, full length um, 
do you remember much about you know what what it feel like to actually you know see the full length and to be able to play it? Yeah. Like, that? like what was it like for that? Um, the first time we got like CD that was the what the before before it was mastered or worked yeah. on. Yeah. We we all we each had like a like a rough draft of it. I remember Dean gave me a copy. He worked down by um by the river, fifty first, some down right there down by the river, and I walked from there to the train. And I put it on the CD player, uh-huh. put it in, listened to it, and I was like, I had to, it was like a church, it was a church day, I sat down in the church and I just listened to it like 10 times in a row. Yeah. And I was like, wow, I can't believe this. Yeah. And this was the rough, the rough version. Yeah. It was like, it was crazy to me because it sounded, I didn't know we could sound like that. Like, it, it sounded like it was almost professional, obviously, you know, it was a rough sure. draft by some kid in the basement. But what do I know about this realm? Sure. I thought that we, I was so ignorant to this stuff, I thought that we were going to go there. Yeah. And you're going to give me a mic, everyone's going to plug in, and we're just going to play it together at the same time and do it live. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. then record that and then put it out. Yeah. I didn't understand how recording worked. Sure, sure. I learned the hard way. You know, that's why the next time we recorded with Alex, I brought my Xbox with me. Uh huh. Uh-huh. Well, my Xbox and my book because I know I was going to be there all that's day right. doing nothing. That's right. <laughs> well, listening to the same thing. Oh, yeah, that sounds good. Oh, okay, we're going to do it again? Oh, again? All right. <laughs> There's pictures of us, like, everybody takes a turn with their head, headsets on, and we're just uh-huh. all asleep, like, thinking of that. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it was crazy to hear it. It was crazy to hear it. Yeah, yeah. And I, I, would, I would burn it out before that, because no one else was listening to it. So it was, like, our secret thing. Absolutely. I would hear it on the train. Every now and then I'll let somebody hear it, but not too, not too much. Sure, sure. Wow. Wow. Um, now, when Gigi left and uh, Alex came on, mm-hmm. was there, like, any period between Gigi and Alex, um, like, that the band wasn't playing, or did Alex come on immediately? He came on, like, soon after okay. she left. Yeah. We were talking about drummers, and we went to a party somewhere, and he was there, and we talked about it. He was like, oh, man, man. Yeah. Someone would tell me the one to be there, and I'm there. Yeah, and he was there. And he he learned. Alex is another great drummer. Yes, he's a fantastic drummer. He learned all those crazy songs pretty fast. I was mad impressed. Yeah. So wow, well, he learned, and he had his own flair to it. Uh huh. So it sounded different, I see. but the same but different. So I, I like the way it sounded with yeah. Alex. Yeah. And the songs that we wrote with Alex that they're out there as well. I love those. Yeah. Hopefully one day those will come out too, in a way. But they turn those songs into Tiger Flower songs. Uh-huh, uh-huh, that's right. But the original ones, to me, were some of my favorite because, like, I was less negative. I was being more positive and hopeful. Sure, I was sure. trying to leave all that anger and shit behind and work on some other shit. Yeah. But eventually that died out, and I joined another band afterwards. Okay, okay. I joined another band afterwards that was okay, you know, it was nice guys. Not really my thing. I just wanted to prove to myself that I could continue to do it if I felt like it. Sure, sure. And I did it. And then it was the same thing where they wanted to tour all the time, and I was like, you guys, geez, sorry. Yeah. I think I'm good. Yeah. Then I was good with music, and then there was another band after that. Well, me, me and Alex did our own thing, too, for a while. Oh, okay. Like, I was playing guitar, he was playing drums, and our friend Azra was playing keyboards, and we had a couple songs, and we were doing okay. We would practice every Sunday. Yeah. Um, no singing, no screaming, just music. Um, like, two-minute songs. Okay. And then I was in a car accident, and I wiped everything out, and I had to recover from that. Then after that, I I'd helped. I was in another band for a little blink of an eye. Okay. Called So Hideous, My Love. Now they changed their name to So Hideous. They actually got signed and they're back. They do music. Okay. I, I did their EP. I screamed on their EP. Okay. Then that was it for me. Yeah. That was, that was good. I see. I feel like that era, I did it. I wanted to do it. I did it well. Yeah. I don't really have, don't want to do it anymore. I did actually, I, I did have garage band stuff I do on my own. I made my own freaking giant magnum opus. Just sure. me. Just my, I could, I could, I'll send you the link. Okay, yeah, that'd be great, yeah. Um, but it was just me, like, doing my own music on garage band. Okay, sure. And 
like in a similar style to Johnny Cage's effect? Um, the kind of stuff no, it was more like I didn't know what I was doing. So I was yeah. kind of learning as I was going. I still don't know what I'm doing. Sure. But I was just like doing like like it, to me it was like a mixture of everything. Like I see. It's, they're screaming and I was screaming into my iPad. Like screaming into my iPad. But it's also instrumental stuff. Okay, yeah. Like kind of like old school boom bap type hip hop. Uh-huh. Maybe some like freestyle influence as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but it was just for me. Like nobody heard it. It's just my sure. own fun. Sure. Can I um, water, another thing of water? Yeah, sure. One second. So, um, as far as uh, like your musical taste now, do you still listen to some of this kind of music? Here and there, there's some bands I do like. Yeah. Not a lot. I sure. listen. My my whole musical taste has changed. What kind of stuff do you like listening to um, mostly now? Mostly now, I don't like really screaming things. Sure, sure. I'm I'm way I've been way over that. Yeah. Um, I like pretty much everything on Daptone Records. Charles Bradley, Lee Fields and the Expressions. This is like retro, like like a new retro soul funk. Yeah. Um. R&B, R&B, uh-huh. a classic, but like a new style. Yeah, sure. I love Charles Bradley, rest in peace. The guy was amazing. Um, just instrumental stuff, like um, bands, like If These Trees Could Talk. Uh-huh. I do, I started getting into this one, I like more like one person things. Yeah. The projects, I want to say more than bands. Sure. There's this one guy, his project, his project is called Hole Dweller. Okay. And it's basically a lot of synth. And... Hobbit uh, themed wow. The Shire it's awesome That's cool. I hope one day to see him live yeah things like that you know nothing tough yeah, screaming sure. angry you know metal I, I don't really do that anymore yeah, yeah. I, I like to hear like love songs and stuff or I'll listen to I'll go on Spotify and just put Yacht Rock on and listen to like old piece of Terra and stuff like that man. absolutely while I'm making food absolutely you know, anything that has, I, I prefer more instrumental based music than vocal based sure. music. Sure. But definitely the screaming stuff, I'm like, I'm good. If yeah. I hear scream, I'm like, I, I, I don't want to deal with that. Yeah. Because it also that, it kind of being in a band and touring around and constantly playing with these bands, I got their inside scoop on how it is. And it's like, oh, I'm tired of hearing this shit. <laughs> yes. Everybody's screaming, everybody's <laughs> upset. <laughs> And um, I just, it just, I got tired of it. Yeah, yeah. You know, unless you come in an original style, like an original way, or if you are gonna scream, do it in a way that's it's not the focal point. Yeah. Like how ISIS does it, it'll be like ten minutes of music and then like one minute of screaming and then the rest is music again. Like I could sure. deal with that. If somebody wanted to be yeah. a band like that with me, I'll do it in a heartbeat. Yeah. Because remember, Johnny Cage. If I were to, if this, if there was ever a reunion, it's never gonna happen because. I couldn't physically do it. I'll drop dead in the first minute. Yeah, screaming yeah. like that—that's not so normal. Much. Yeah, and you're screaming for like forty minutes. Wow. Wow. And I remember, I I can't do it. Yeah. Like I physically can't do it. I would drop dead. Yeah. But if it was something like ISIS, that I could be like, I could scream, like, rah, 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 and then well, just take it. a step back, I would do it. I would do it. Now. You bring up an interesting point. Did did you have when when you were thick into it? Did you have anything that you would do like to help your vocal cords or things like that? Oh uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. What did you do? I I would um I found I went to a vocal coach one time. Okay, yeah. And he gave me these exercises to do to, for to 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 have projection to really like belt it out there, and I would do a couple of his little exercises. And then I had that um, Melissa Cross DVD. Some I don't know how I got it, but she's like a vocal coach for screaming. I yeah. did that for a while, and I would I got into Yogi T. Throat coat. Yeah, I would do like two or three at a time. After we played, I would do like two or three. Honey, drink it and just yeah. Stop talking for the rest of the night. talk here and there, like laugh or talk low. You know, let them do a lot of talking. I was drink the tea. I do my own thing. I was. Very, when we play the show, Will likes to talk, Dean likes to talk, TG will be off there doing something, and I'll probably go right back to the van. Yeah. I was reading on um, the Wheel of Time series at the oh, whole time. okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'll go back to the band with a flashlight, read, read the book, <laughs> yeah. Listen to, uh, you know, uh, Art Bell, or whatever the hell, Coast to Coast AM. Yeah, sure. 
which the, those are my funnest times. Yeah. Driving late at night, listening to our bell coast to coast with Will and Dean. Uh huh. And that was fun. Yeah, yeah. Hearing about UFOs and Bigfoot and all that cool uh-huh. shit. Uh-huh. Waiting to see if we could see something out there in the night. <laughs> <laughs> Did y'all ever see anything? Well, me and Will seen stuff. Yeah. And Will has his own experiences with that stuff. I don't want to put him on blast, but yeah, sure, I'll tell sure, you after sure. this as well, I'll tell you. Okay, sure, sure, sure. Look forward to hearing that. But I'll tell you what, before Johnny Cage, I was always on the fence with all that stuff. Yeah. After Johnny Cage, I'm I'm completely, I believe, all that. Yeah. Paranormal stuff. Yeah. Staying in all these crazy people's houses, staying in the murder hotels. Yes. <laughs> Those ice. That was another bad part about touring around, especially out in having to stay in those grimy ass and nasty fifty dollar a night hotels. Uh-huh. Where one one guy pays and then he goes in, you open up the door, we all run in. Yeah. Because it was a you know, I couldn't do it. Yeah, sure. There'll be two bands in one room often. <laughs> that was a nightmare for me, man. Wow. Wow. But uh yeah. Um so as far as uh you know the the Bronx scene, which mm-hmm. you kind of came up in, and Johnny Cage, of course, is an ele- element of as well. Um, was there anything, you know, that you would say was like unique about the Bronx sound or the Bronx attitude or anything? Of these yeah, bands? Big, big time. Yeah, big time. Talk about that. Because the way that, first of all, the, just as I'm hearing the the rough draft of, of the song, even the t- cassette tapes, because everybody had their own cassette tape when yeah. we recorded old school style with a cassette uh-huh. and I would listen to it I was on the 2 train yeah I lived on East 232nd Street at that time so I was from East 232nd Street all the way to Times Square uh-huh. get off and walk and we practiced at the music building we ended, up, we ended up practicing at the music building okay yeah where we had our stuff was there you know sometimes we would I would just uh, I was like living in that building I ended up working in that building for a wow. while too um, so I would Visually, I would hear the things that they're coming up with, and what I'm seeing is matching with what I'm hearing. Uh-huh. I'm looking at, at the buildings, I'm looking at the subway, I'm looking at, you know, the, the, the hustle and bustle and the grime and stuff, and it was like really, yeah, to me, it felt really part of, of the music. Yeah, yeah. It felt perfect, and it, Will and Dean and Gigi weren't really seeing what I was seeing. Yeah. It was unique to, to my own experience, but it matched so well. And I always wanted to to make some kind of video to a, uh, a song with what I was seeing. You know, we never did it, but maybe we'll do it down the road somewhere. Yes. Yeah. I feel like bands, it's easier now to do all that stuff. It is. It is. They, they, they don't even call them videos anymore. They call them visuals. You can just make visuals and, and just have a song in the background and, and have kind of like what it, look, what it looked like. Because that era... That was a very transitional time in life, man. This is like after 9-11, uh-huh. like a year or two after 9-11. Uh-huh. Things were changing, you know? Um, there was a brief moment after 9-11 that was, I want to say, the most probably the most peaceful era yeah. in, in, in my generation where crime was down, you know, and things were okay. You could take... Sorry, that's my water drinking app. You could take... Um, the train at three or four o'clock in the morning, and wow. obviously it's dangerous. But yeah, it wasn't—I sure. wouldn't do that now. I would not do that now at all. Yeah, yeah. It's like the wild west out there right now. Yeah. And even though when I was growing up it was bad too, but this is like a different kind of like bad. Yeah. It's not as bad, but it's it's bad in its own kind of way. Sure. But then again, we're so used to it, you know. Yeah. Like, I feel like I would never be a victim of with anything. Yeah. I mean, the cross, you know, knock on wood, I'm not going to be a freaking Is this real wood? I think so. <laughs> <laughs> knock on wood, I don't want to be no victim. Yeah. But, um, yeah, it, it just matched. I see. It yeah. matched. And yeah. Will, Will, you know, Dean Harlem, he lived in Harlem, he got the trade right, he has a trade right there. Gigi's a, no, Gigi no match, he's all over the place. Uh-huh. So it all, it all it's, it's, it's like a Bronx sound. And the way that Gigi has that bounce to the to the drums, it, it kind of had like, you know, it had yeah. that that like that Bronx little beat yeah. bounce. You know? Yeah, it does. Yeah. And not a lot of bands really had that. Yeah. 
everything was straight up like dun, 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 dun. you know, like real That's like right. which is like good you know I like that too yeah sure this is more like a little bit more intricate when it came to like how they presented the music but I, I definitely feel like it's a Bronx it's, it's, it's a Bronx sound yeah yeah absolutely well um, so are there things that we haven't had the chance to talk about today you know, whether about your musical life or you know parts not directly related to music that you want to share just so you know I, I, I'm happy to be part of this I wanted to be part of this because that era for me is very important to my timeline my storyline in my life Absolutely. being a young teen seeing Guys like Go to Mentis, Blackout, Irie, Rice to Earth, you know, uh, Proof Purchase, all these bands. I remember one time, me and Will, I want to say 1997, yeah. hanging out, drinking 40s, in this dude's van with the door wide open and the Hail Bop Comet, you could see it in the sky. It was, it was a thing. This was around the time where that cult. Oh, um. Applegate was the guy, Heaven's Gate. Heaven's Gate, Heaven's Gate. It was around right. that era. I see, yeah, We're yeah, drinking yeah, 40, yeah. listening to heavy metal, and it it was one of the, it was that guy, from, uh, it was a Hellbound guy. He was that band Hellbound. Oh, and a, a guy in Hellbound, was Yeah, it? we uh, hung out in some dude's van. Louis I, or JD I don't, or I don't, I don't, Scott I don't, or Aaron. At that time, I, I have I would have to ask Will. Yeah, yeah, The so guy had so long hair. Hellbound guys, okay. And it was like, a, like he was like a metal dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, we're yeah, drinking yeah, 40s yeah. out by the school, and like comments going around. I was like, wow, this is... This is awesome. You can't get better than this. Yeah. But, um, so this era of my, is important to me. Absolutely. This is why I wanted to be, this is, normally I would not do any of this stuff. Yeah. yeah. I know Will gets interviewed, TG, they do their own thing. I never, you never find anything about me. Yeah. This is one of the only ones, this is probably the only one I'm ever going to do. Yeah. Or talk about. But, um, yeah, it, that, era was ver that era was very important to my timeline. Absolutely. And I look back at those days, really, like, with good memories. Absolutely. Adventure. It was like young teens out in the streets, going to shows, going to parties, learning about bands, music, you know, finding other people that like what you like, and then maybe they'll tell you about a band that you never heard of, and you tell them about something that you like, or a movie, or a show. So it was a special set. This is all before the internet. I know. I know. I know. Johnny Cage is pre-internet, because MySpace, social media came out, I want to say 2004 or five. Yeah, and Johnny right. Cage was like a year before, or two before that. That's right. So we didn't have that. A lot of these bands were formed after social media just to be on social media. Uh-huh. And we were from before that era. That's right. We're from, like, the making the flyers and going and passing out flyer era. Yeah. And thank God, because all those bands afterwards felt like they're doing it just to try to get girls and be popular. And sure. They weren't doing it to, like, make a cool song or make a cool record or something cool. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I'm I'm proud to be thank you for letting me do this. Hey, my my, my honor, thank you very much for uh, participating. I'm really happy that this is gonna be a thing, you know, and I have something for you. Oh okay, okay, I'll great. Put it, yeah. put it right here. Yeah, I'll go ahead and oh, uh, yeah, you, you wanna show it on camera? Yep, yeah. oh, yeah, let's stick. I brought this for you. This is one of the um here you go. Okay, yeah, let's see here. Let's see. Oh my god, look Lucky. That is the wow. record. It's a rare item in it's this world. It's really badass. Yeah, you can you can find this on Spotify, but this is it's nowhere near the same experience. It's, I would like you to have that. That's amazing. The Bronx add it to the Society. collection. It'd be part of our permanent collection. So then cool, it'll always live here and be preserved here. That means a lot to me. Hey, thank you so much. This is amazing. I, I mean, it's a really cool yeah. like cover yeah. and everything too. Yeah. I mean, you know. You, you you miss you miss part of mm -hmm. how like what a unique cover it is on you know when you see it electronically if it's just a picture but yeah like, it's who who did the cover do you remember uh this well it's a take on Dean's old artwork I forgot the name of the guy okay. but he did work for a couple of bands he did work for this band called Pine Grove whom I like yeah um he did a bunch of he, it's like I guess he liked Dean's King. Yeah, and he like did a, like a deconstructed version of the uh, Dean's original artwork. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. It's cool. The inside's cool, and it's 
you know, might as well it's, it's nice. open it up and throw it up. Let's see here. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just to show the record itself, which is also really cool. Yeah, that thing that I don't use in front of the Wow, this is awesome. Thank you so much. I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording. No problem.